Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Caravan of Garbage, where it's a very special time here at Caravan of Garbage, Mason. Do you know why? I'll tell you why, Mason. Uh, it's for people living alike. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's terrific. A special Love time. It. But also, I want to do uh, what uh, I think we should call an Alan moore -thon, Oh, sure, yeah. Where we go through every Alan Moore movie adaptation that mm -hmm. we haven't already looked at. We've mm -hmm, already sure. done a couple. We did Watchmen. Yes. We did Constantine mm -hmm. or Constantine. So I want to do every other <laughs> thing. And I think what's interesting about every one of his adaptations is is that he hates them. Mm. And every episode of this, I want to come back at the end and tell everybody specifically why he hates each particular one. Do people know who Alan Moore is? Let's do it. Oh, the listeners aren't... <laughs> the, the viewers aren't telling us. Okay, no. I guess we'll have to do it. <laughs> oh, well, here's a, here's a, a legendary uh, yeah. comic book writer. I mean, he's written other things, of course, yep. uh, but, but he is probably best known for, uh, I would say, maybe reinvigorating the comic book industry mm -hmm. and, and getting... Not a, a lot of credit or remuneration for it. Yeah. Uh, he, of course, uh, wrote uh, the original Watchmen mm -hmm. uh, with with artist Dave Gibbons, V for Vendetta, yep. uh, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Oh, yeah. We'll be coming back to all of those. And if, and if you're hearing any of these and going, ugh, yeah. well, that's because you've just you're, seen the movie. You're right. You're right. You're absolutely right. Uh, you know, They're uh, not all bad, though, I feel. Even no. if he hates them, there are some definitely yeah, good stuff Yeah, he, he wrote, uh, of course, uh, the Batman story, The Killing Joke. Yep. Uh, which perhaps inadvertently sent the, the comic book in industry down a fairly dark path, I mm -hmm. think. I would say legendary comic book creator and, uh, by all accounts, a very nice man. Just lo loved comics so much, created uh, created some incredible stories in that medium, got burned a bunch of times both in terms of contracts and and uh, being uh, re remunerated for his for his time and his and his creative efforts, and he's rich enough where he will just tell anybody anything. <laughs> <laughs> sure, which the I've, truth, yeah, which, specifically, yeah, yeah which yeah. I've always enjoyed. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to talk. Also, about might live in a cave. Yeah, he might and maybe have. his magic. Yeah, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> so this is interesting. This is from an, uh, a recent-ish MTV interview where he was asked about what is the state of comic, uh, the comics medium today, and he said the comics medium is brainless. And then he was asked, and what of the current crop of comic creators? And he said, a generation of fan artists and writers who were brought into a kind of scab labour because they would have paid to write Batman. So there you go. All right, then. Now, right. the earliest adaptation uh, of his work is obviously in the title of this, but it's a, it's a, it's a movie called From Hell, mm. starring one John Depp from yes. the year 2001. Mm. And going back to this, I had seen it before. It feels a bit like a kind of a Jack the Ripper Stephen Moffat esque adaptation, except it's pretty boring. Oh my god, it's so, <laughs> so dreary. But the, it, well, it's interesting because the original uh, uh, comic book. I've been reading it. Yeah, it's from 1989, or it began in 1989, I should say. Yeah, and spanned, I would say, all, almost a decade. Yeah. The the um, uh, written by Moore and illustrated by Eddie Campbell, mm. and it's it's it sort of ties together a lot of different theories about Jack the Ripper yep. from that era. There's a lot of historical context. It's, it's, very, it's very accurate it's in terms very of like dialogue even. Yeah, and, and, and different and practices. Extraordinarily and, yeah. detailed and and, uh, yep. and quite grubby. You're going to see some genitals. Yeah, you up. absolutely are. But uh, Not that genitals have to be grubby. Let's not... Let's but these ones people. are. These ones definitely are. From it's this the era, era. They, yeah. they were uh, uh, definitely. And someone clearly was like, let's get this epic... And let's compact it down to two hours and yeah. see how well that goes. And strip a lot of the good stuff out of it. I yeah. think one of the things... And leave just a bunch of anonymous white dudes with like <laughs> moustaches and odd haircuts and be like, can you tell the difference between all these guys? Yeah. I can't really. No, not honest. really. Yeah, they're just circling a pentagram or whatever's going on. What I will say about this though, a lot of great character actors yeah. in this, many of which are not with us anymore. So the late, great Ian Holm, yep. people know from The Lord of the Rings. Mm. Uh, Robbie Coltrane. Choo-choo, uh, unfortunately, the Robbie Coltrane has stopped. That's exactly yeah. right. You know, he, He's uh, quite recently passed mm. away at time of recording. And, of course, Johnny Depp, who, yep. uh, who um, on the set of um, The Lone Ranger, he got many of his necklaces and scarves. <laughs> Uh, caught in a horse's bridle, and he was dragged to his death. What? Yeah, it's true. I didn't know that. No, that's actually true. And so, like, we'll never know what Johnny Depp would be like in the present day. But Incredible, yeah. Mason. So he plays a character, uh, well, he's actually a real guy called Frederick 
Abilene, who was on the Jack the Ripper cases, because that's what this is about. Sure. Jack the Ripper is running amok. He'd be murdering women. And one of the things that this... Who, who could it be? Who in the cast could it be? <laughs> given that he sounds exactly like Ian Holm. <laughs> and there's, and there's mo- been no attempt to disguise his voice at any at any point. Did you notice the bit where they soft-focused his hand so yeah. you couldn't tell it's like an old man hand? Mm-hmm. I remember the trailer for this, and I'm going to see if I can find it, but I had a quick poke around and I couldn't. I'm pretty sure you see Ian Holm in the Jack the Ripper outfit mm. in the trailer. Yeah, yeah. When, when this came out. He's wearing a t-shirt that says, I'm Jack the Ripper and all <laughs> I got was this lousy t-shirt. He also has a big bag of medical stuff that he's showing off mm. and he seems to know a lot about removing organs and murders and pentagrams oh, and secret societies. Oh, perhaps Jack the Ripper had one of these amputation kits. <laughs> anyway, we hope we're not spoiling it for you. But also, we are. But also, the difference between this and the comic is... James, the com- it's an old movie. It came it's out in true. 2001. It's so old. The comic also... it. It's not a mystery, the comic. Mm. And I think maybe they missed a trick here and just kind of don't make it a mystery. Yeah. But, like, Johnny Depp doesn't know who it is. Mm. R.I.P. R.I.P. But, you know, the rest of us do. You know what? The, I think this would have su- what would have suited this really well. Mm. And it would have been ahead of its time, I guess. But a Sin City-style adaptation. Okay. Like, in the, like using the art style of the comic. Using the art style of the comic book. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You wanted to see some grubby genitals? Yes, I wanted to see some grubby genitals. <laughs> what I thought was also fascinating... And there's nowhere to do that on the internet. <laughs> no, there's not. What I thought was fascinating about, uh, I think, the comic book in, in relation to this is, in, in, in this, mm-hmm. the character of uh, Frederick Abilene, uh, he has magic powers where he'll take a bunch of old-timey drugs. And boy, we're getting a lot of that. Sure, yeah, yeah. He's drinking poison and absinthe. And s- James, s- absinthe's not an old-timey drug. I can go to Fitzroy and get it at any bar. I'm sure it's a different <laughs> absinthe, Mason, to then and now. You know, he's, he's, sm- he's smoking a bunch of bloody... Um, reefer. Reefer, yeah. He's doing the big reefers and all of that. But these give him magic murder-seeing future powers. Sure, yeah, yeah. And in the comic, they introduce a character very early on who claims to have had a bunch of insight into the Jack the Ripper murders. But he's just a liar. He just lied. Yeah. And I think he did maybe... it once as a kid and then <laughs> caught on and he's like, well, I guess I'm a liar now. Yeah, and he just kind of ran with it into into very old age. And I guess to this movie's credit, I guess, one of the things it does do well, it does a pretty good job of replicating the era and it also even replicates the murders. Like, pretty much perfectly. They, they even actually, I think, used, and we can't show any of this, like actual pictures of the murders in the movie, which is pretty grim. Oh, yeah, And right. all the crime scenes and everything that's carved into everybody, they they went out of their way to be like, let's <laughs> let's let's give these murders their due. Mm. Yeah. And also the, what another thing they attempted to cram in was a, like an... They, they were like, we've got two hours and we've got to solve this murder mystery where Ian Holm did it. <laughs> L- let's cram in a, 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 a romantic subplot as well. Yeah, no good. Between, between uh, Depp's character and, and Mary Kelly, played by Heather Graham. Yep. Doesn't work, I Doesn't think. work at all, yeah, yeah. I think their performances are pretty good. Yeah, I don't disagree with that. I also think it does a pretty good job of just depicting how terrible this era was to... And I guess, I don't know whether it's exploitative or it's just, I guess, accurate of how terribly like these women were treated because uh-huh. the women, if you don't know, were being murdered were sex workers. What's also interesting about this era is the, the difference between a Jack the Ripper murder and actual medicine in this era, they're not that different, <laughs> are true, they? Yeah. they? really are. They? A lot of the time you could probably get away with it by being like, yeah, I was doing a... Yeah, they said they had a sprained knee. So I yeah, had so I hit him in the head with a hammer. Yeah, had to <laughs> and he stopped. Yeah, he's limping. Cured. <laughs> Cured. Yeah. There are too many characters in this movie. Too many like like indistinguishable. Yes. British sergeants and whatever. and nobody has anything to do. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I don't know how they could have fixed that. Yeah. But uh, like Jason Fleming is in this, and he's in it for a scene. And then he's gone for most of the movie. Then he's back for another scene. Who's Jason Fleming in this? He's um Ian Holmes, uh, a sort of cabbie. Oh yeah. Uh, see, you've already forgotten. You no, watched you're this right. today. He's in it a bit, but yeah. he's also he's. Uh, well, we're going to be covering this. He's also in LXG. He sure is. Yeah. So you know, this was his bread and butter for a time. I, I guess. But no, I, you're right. Doing doing performances <laughs> in movies, Alan Moore was guaranteed not to like. <laughs> That's great. I think though, like uh, the most realistic thing about this this fictional tale is at the end, you know, everybody realizes or already knows that Ian Holm was doing was doing the, all the murders, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and obviously it's like famously we don't we don't really know who Jack the Ripper was mm-hmm. uh, because it was in an era where people just went we didn't see it so we don't know. Yeah, you know, they would say CCTV hasn't been invented yet. That's what they would say. Mm-hmm. And there's a moment where the Queen finds out that what he's been doing and the reason he's been doing the murders is because the prince in this has had uh, has been having an, a secret liaison and affair and he's married one of the women and had a secret love child 
And so they want to cover up all of that. So that's why the murders are happening. Uh -huh. And the Queen's like, I didn't know he was going to do graphic, horrible murders. But at the same time, he did me a solid. So could you just quietly just get rid of that? And I feel mm -hmm. like that's very on brand for a Queen to just go, hey, terrible thing in my family. <laughs> Thanks. And also, shh. Mm. Don't even say anything to nobody. Now, obviously, you're referring to you know all those all those gaudy outfits Meghan Markle wears. So <laughs> that's exactly that's what I'm exactly referring right. to. Right, that's the worst thing. It's the biggest scandal that's ever come to the royal family. Disgusting. <laughs> I feel like this could have been like a very interesting mini series as well. You know, sure, and yeah. again, different era, but but this is pre prestige TV, yeah, really. But I also think I've seen British crime dramas, you know, before and of this era mm -hmm. from your BBCs or yeah. whatever. And I think Michael Cracker, Cracker, for example, featuring the late Robbie Coltrane. Yeah, but I think even Michael Caine did a, like a Jack the Ripper series or movie or whatever. Sure, point. yeah. And I think there's stuff of this era which is lower budget with less famous people in it, which is just better. Mm. And I think this should be like that also. And yet it is not. It's no wonder it never got a sequel, Mason. <laughs> so true. <laughs> Anyways, it's time for Green Trivia slash That Guy Shouting Rodney. Ah, uh, yes, a, a triumphant return. Uh, uh, super cut first? Yeah. There it is. Wow. Here we go. So, Mason, uh, in real life, Commissioner of Police Charles Warren never arrived at the site of the fifth murder because he'd resigned shortly before. Now, strangely, before his resignation, he ordered that no police officer was to enter a crime scene until he arrived. Oh. Suspicious, maybe. Who knows? Very suspicious, know. Yeah. I know. Even though all of the previous victims had been killed on the street, so no officer or investigator entered the building of the final murder for three hours because they were unaware of his resignation. Wow. And that's just, that's just some cracking police work right there, mate. Just people standing around being like, is he coming? But that is a Should way. Should we call him? If you're going to go, that's Can a way to go. Can we call him? Do we yeah. have that? Do, do, we we have have the, <laughs> do we have the technology? Do we have mobile phone technology? Should we send a horse or a bird or something? Mm. Yeah. Now, the Hughes brothers who directed this, they originally wanted Daniel Day-Lewis to play the lead role. Okay, sure. There's some elevation, Mason. You know what he's mm. about, isn't he? Uh, when that fell through, they then interviewed uh, Sean Connery, Jude Law, and Brad Pitt before settling on one John Depp Mason. Now, something interesting about harvesting organs, etc. Blue Harvest, the joke that I do. Oh, yes. I, I just didn't. I, I'm not, am I going to keep doing this? Is this the last one? I don't Might know. Might be the last one. Yeah. Wow. End of an era. Or I'll just bring it back for no reason. Oh, sure, yeah. <laughs> Let's put a pin in it for now. Yeah. Let the comments run wild. Yep. And then maybe bring it back later. Absolutely. Now, this is also, and you're going to love this, Mason. This is the theatrical movie debut of one Dominic Cooper as Constable Number 3. That's incredible. You probably remember. I don't remember that. Yeah, that's good stuff. And like I said, they're all interchangeable. These guys. <laughs> now, here's the thing. This is the bit that I... Uh, this is really the reason why we're doing any of this. Uh, what? Oh, Alan Moore's reaction. What does Alan movie? Moore think okay, of this? Right, right, right. Now, again, it's very different from the comic, but I even think even if it's an exact kind of replication or as close to as you can do of his comic books, he doesn't like that either because it's like it's a different medium and like my, my work exists in its own That's true. format and not everything has to be adapted for something else, mm. et cetera, and so forth. But anyway, he said, Fred Abilene was based on real life. He was an unassuming man in middle age who was not a heavy drinker and who, as far as I know, remained faithful to his wife throughout his entire life. Uh, he also lived like into his 80s, like he didn't die, die early. Johnny Depp saw fit to play this character as an absinthe, absinthe swilling, opium den frequenting dandy with a haircut that in the Metropolitan Police Force in 1888 would have gotten him beaten up by the other officers. I did think about the haircut <laughs> throughout most of this movie. I'm like, he, he's not getting any respect for that. No. That is, you, may, you may as well be a, a, a wild man who grew up in the jungle. <laughs> Are you right. kidding me? <laughs> Ridiculous. What are you, Tarzan in this yeah, era? Come on. Absolutely. Now, the box office, it's not a huge hit. Uh, made for 35 million, made 74.6. The rough rule is, we've talked about this before, you need to pretty much double your budget to, mm -hmm. to make any kind of money back. So it, I guess it didn't lose money, probably. But mm. yeah, not a, not a huge hit for the time. But uh, if, do you want another adaptation? Well, I know Alan Moore does, but do you? <laughs> Do another crack at this. I don't think so, no. I no, not even like a more realistic and whatever, whatever. Oh, an Alan more realistic. Sure, it's good. Uh, well, Mason, it's funny you say that. It's funny you have thoughts on this because in 2015 it was reported that FX were developing a... Wait a second, you didn't want my opinion at all. <laughs> no, I just wanted to say this you thing that I found. son yeah. of a bitch. FX was developing a From Hell drama series with Don Murphy, who produced the 2001 film as executive producer. So David Arada was announced as the writer of the adaptation, but... Isn't that fascinating? When yeah. You, you do a thing in Hollywood and you've got your claws in it forever. Yeah. This like, is mine. This is mine now. Yeah, fair it enough. It's bad at the time. I would do Maybe that. Maybe I promise I'll make it better this time. I don't even know if it's bad. Is it bad? 
I think it's lacking mystery. It's lacking. Yeah, it's kind uh-huh. of meanders a bit. Yes, and, it does. Yeah. Yeah. It's most, it, it was Ian Holm. You always know what it is. It's mostly about how bad conditions were in that era. Yes. And I think I'd rather see a, just a story about that yeah. as opposed to throwing in the, the Jack the Ripper stuff as well. Yeah. Anyways, if you know who Jack the Ripper is, leave him mm. in the comments below, please. I say him. Oh, you think yeah. we can crack this case? Yeah, maybe. Sure. Every now and then it's like, we found Jack the Ripper's DNA and it's we think it's this guy. Fuck you. No, you don't know anything. Shut up. All right? They unless, should shut up. Unless there's a picture or CCTV, Mason, That's we're probably right. never going to know. Mm-hmm. It was probably just like some absolute lunatic and there was no DNA evidence, so he got away with it, despite the fact that he was probably just walking around with the blood on his hands. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because that was what you did at the time. No, this is this is actually blood from a minority that you don't like, so it's fine. Oh, it's fine, is it? Yeah, oh, yeah. there's a lot of that in this, actually, isn't yeah, there? there is, Boy, yeah. is there, yeah. Anyways, this is Caravan of Garbage. Yes, we do this every week. We're going to be back. Here's a hint. I already said it. It's LXG, but here it is. Here's a clip of it or whatever. Oh, we're doing LXG again, are we? Yeah. Because we did, for people who don't know, if you go over to bigsandwich.co, yeah. we have all sorts of bonus podcasts and movie commentaries. I'm pretty confident one of those is League of Extraordinary You are absolutely gentlemen. right. But now we have to watch it again to talk about it again. Oh, but I hate it so much. <laughs> it's a bad movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But any of these, if, if you have seen any of these, please, please read the original source material. It's way better. <laughs> yeah, it always is. Yeah. Even the good stuff, the original stuff is is way better. Uh, but I still, I'm not sure this is the worst adaptation we're going to look at. Oh, it's LXG. No, I wouldn't even say so. Oh no, is there worse stuff? <laughs> we'll see, we'll oh, see. Oh God. Anyways, if you don't want to see any of that early, including that LXG commentary, if you head over to bigsandwich.co, there's bonus podcasts, as mentioned, movie commentaries, the videos, these videos actually, and a bunch of others mm. always go up there early when Ben and Lawrence get the edit done That's or right. you can check out our podcast the weekly planet where we talk movies and comics and tv shows it's on all platforms it's got its own it's got its own youtube and <laughs> it's on right, spotify yeah. and you can find hell it. yeah you just type it in and there's a shorts channel and there's a shorts there's channel a TikTok. there's a tiktok there's too many social medias right we're thinking about getting rid of all no we're not they're all they'll, 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 they'll we're thinking me. about getting on more even the ones we don't understand <laughs> we're gonna get on be real that's right that's right we're gonna get on parlor these are all good things <laughs> that's right we're gonna have we're t- gonna get on that conservative <laughs> dating app <laughs> We're gonna All cat- the ones that are just Nazis now. Yeah, we're just going to catfish a bunch of Nazis yeah. <laughs> to watching this. All right, thanks, everyone. Grab that gem, you guys, and RIP Johnny Depp. Yeah. We just never know. We'll never know what Johnny Depp in 2022. What does he look like? Right? Don't know. Probably aged like a fine wine. No doubt, Mason. Not not like like all withered like a grape, you know? <laughs> I think fine so. wine, not an old grape. A grape. Not an old raisin a grape, of a man, a grape. you know? All right, thanks, everyone. Just a raisin covered in pirate regalia. Hypothetically. Hypothetically, you know? (laughs) Yeah.